and welcome to Comedy Cabaret. When we first moved here, I thought to myself, you know, we need a little theater group here. Wouldn't that be fun to start some kind of group, you know, where we just did shows, nothing really super serious, but just did some fun shows. And, um, but then how do you get it started? And so then I met somebody who had been here a really long time, and I think you all know her, Ro Goldberg. And Ro and I immediately clicked, and we started planning. And so the first show we did was called Awanga Kawabonga. <laughs> and we've used Awanga a few times in our shows. And it was fun. And then she and Jim White did George and Gracie, and I wrote it, and that was fun. And then suddenly we've got a Wonka Housewives going AWOL, and, and then we've got the Cooking Divas with Julia Child and Paul and Dean. And then last time we did it, we had the Wonka Housewives returning, but the husband's revenge. So we brought in those guys. I think they're hooked too. And so it's, it's been fun, and I've enjoyed writing them, and we certainly enjoy performing them for you. So thank you for coming, and I would like to, Mary Ann Crispino, thank you, the decor and everything like that, um, all the time. She, she, you need something done, and there's Mary Ann, and it's just incredible. And there's a couple of people tonight who volunteered whose names aren't on the programs. They came to the first show, they liked it so well, they said, you need some help. So I've got Denise Peterson and Daryl Jacobs helping out tonight, so I appreciate that from them too. And as you all know, the sound system, the videos to help us out, it's our wonderful friends from the chapel. We've got Hank and Brandy Parisi. We've got Claude Wagner. We've got Pat Kelly. We've got John Thurman. Who else is back there? Anyway, thank you. So hopefully you've had enough wine. You've had enough food. And everybody's gone potty. And all phones are turned off. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the O Golden Girls of Awanga. Thank you for being a friend Travel down the road and back again Your heart is true You're a pal and a confidant And if you threw a party Didn't invite everyone you knew You would see the biggest gift would be from me And the car Sorry, it took me so long. Oh, what are you watching? Jeopardy. Oh, you know, Ma, there's a Hollywood Square special coming on pretty soon. Ah, oh, Dorothy, who cares? All those people are dead. <laughs> and where'd you go shopping? There is a new store right around the corner. It's called Sensations. Oh, my God, Ma, it is so amazing. In the produce department, you know how they have those misters? Well, just when the mister comes on, there is this thunder and lightning, and then all of a sudden you smell the, the scent of fresh rain. Oh, it's good amazing. Grief. Well, and seriously, when I passed the milk cases, I could hear the cows mooing, and I caught the smell of freshly mowed hay. Oh, that's ridiculous. In the meat department, there is the aroma of charcoal grilled steaks with onions. Ooh, seriously? Seriously. Mm, yum. And when I got to the egg cases, <laughs> I could hear the hens clucking and cackling, and the air was just filled with the aroma of, of bacon and eggs frying. Dorothy, never go there if you're hungry. Oh, I think my favorite department was the bakery department. Ooh. Oh, those cookies and the smell of bread, it was, it was incredible. And, and uh, what about the toilet paper department? <laughs> Ma, now come on, be serious. They had a gift department too. Oh. Look at this cute little mirror that I found Let me there. See Isn't it that cute? Oh, hmm. Did you get this in the fish department? 
I also bought your favorite popcorn, Ma. Uh, did you wash your hands after you left that toilet paper department? <sighs> really? Ma, I did not buy toilet paper. Oh, Here. thank you. Oh, come on, let me switch channels. We don't want to miss that Hollywood Square special. Oh, why not? They're showing some of the highlights throughout the years. Oh, Ma, remember the stars that were on that show? They were, they were so iconic. I mean, it was Charlie Weaver and Rosemary and, gosh, Rodney Dangerfield and Paul Lynn. Oh, TV was, TV was incredible in those days, not like today's shows. Today's shows are just boring. Look, Lamb Chops, Jeopardy keeps my mind sharp, trying to question the answers. <laughs> I, I think, I think you mean answer the questions. No, they give you the answers. You have to ask the questions. It's very educational. Real, and you've learned things from Jeopardy? Yeah, you bet. What? Take, take animals, for instance. Cats have 32 muscles in each ear. 32? Wow. And a crocodile? It can't stick out its tongue. Well, I've never gotten close enough to notice. Yes, and a dragonfly has a lifespan of just 24 hours. Well, I guess he better make the most of all yeah. 24. Get this, though. A goldfish has a memory span of just three seconds. Three seconds. Well, that does sound like Rose. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Hey, Ma, I'm back. I'm sorry I took so long. Oh, what are you watching? Jeopardy. Oh, now, Ma, you know that a Hollywood, special, Hollywood Square special is going to be coming on really soon. Oh, who cares, Dorothy? All those people are dead. Hmm. Where'd you go shopping? Oh, I went to the new car. Your mic isn't working, is it? <laughs> oh, we're starting off with a glitch already. Say something again. Hello. Not dead. Shall we call John Thurman? <laughs> Calling John Thurman. <laughs> we might just start over until we, once we get her mic. Oh, say something. Hello. Yeah. Need to be turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, are you here, Lauren? All right, she's going to talk really, really loud right now, I guess. Okay, so I went to the new store around the corner, Ma. I tell you, it is really, really special. <laughs> Let me tell you about the new store around the corner. See, what they do is they have all of these things that are sound and, and sensory. It's called Sensations, this new store. I've lost my mother. <laughs> you know, John promised we all had new batteries tonight. When Rose says that line, you remember this moment, because I certainly will. <laughs> In fact, we, we don't want you to hold Rose's performance against her because she's, uh, she's Blanche Devereaux in this show. I want you to realize Blanche Devereaux. And of course, Mary Kay Truckenmiller, why she might be from Minnesota, and she might talk a little bit funny like those Minnesotans do, but she's really a highly trained nurse and extremely bright. <laughs> and then there's me, and I don't even know what to say about myself, other than I've found a troop to trailer trash with Roe Goldberg, and here we are, and I write these plays, and we rely on these incredible sound people so that we can um, make sure you hear us. And we rely on these videos because, frankly, we're too damn old to memorize anything anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's going to speak loudly and project. <laughs> All right. So, Ma, where I went was that new store called Sensations just around the corner. I mean, I tell you, they've got an automatic 
a mister for the produce, and before it comes on, there's this sound of thunder, and then once it starts raining on the produce, you can actually smell the scent of the rain. Oh, good. Green. Oh, and Ma, when I pass the milk department, you could hear the cows mooing, and you could you could smell the scent of a freshly mowed hay. That's Oh, uh, well, let me tell you, Ma, in the meat department, there's the aroma of charcoal steaks with onions. Seriously? Seriously. And then when I got to the egg case, I heard the hens clucking, cackling, and the air was filled with the, the smell of bacon and eggs frying. Dorothy, never go there if you're hungry. You know, the best department was the bakery, Ma. You wouldn't believe the smell of the fresh baked bread and the cookies. It was incredible. Uh, you're just making fun of me. It was a nice store, and they even had a gift department. Look at this cute little fish, fishy, 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 fishy. Did you get this gem in the fish department? You know, I'm, I'm not even going to talk to you. I did get some of your favorite popcorn, however. I did not go to the toilet to paper department, Ma. I'm sorry. Here, have some popcorn. Oh, and I'm going to change the channels. We don't want to miss this Hollywood Square special. Why not? Oh, they're showing some of the highlights throughout the years. I mean, remember the cast members, Mom? They were icons. There was Paul Lynn and, and Rodney Dangerfield, Charlie Weaver, and your favorite, Rosemary. Mm, the television shows were today are just boring, especially these game shows that you watch. Look. Ooh. Okay. Lanza, Lanza. Jeopardy keeps my mind sharp, trying to question the answers. Oh, <laughs> Ma, I think you mean answer the questions. No, I don't. They give you the answers. You have to ask the questions. And you have learned things from this program. Uh, you bet. It's still not working. <laughs> Take animals, for instance. A cat has 32 muscles in each ear. 32, wow. And a dragonfly, no. A crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Well, you know, I have never gotten close enough to a crocodile to even see if that's the case. Now a dragonfly. A dragonfly has a lifespan of just 24 hours. I bet he better make the most of all 24. And this is the best. A goldfish has a memory span of only three seconds. Now that sounds like Rose. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> There's more. A shark is the only fish that can blink with both eyes, and a snail. A snail can sleep for three years. Now that's a nap. Knowing that, Ma, I can now die at peace. <laughs> Hello? 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 Are you still there? Hello? Oh. They must have hung up. Oh, oh, Sophia, Dorothy. Hi. Oh, were you on the phone? Who, who was that? Who was it? Home Depot. Home Depot. What would they want? Well, remember last year when we ordered those triple pane energy efficient windows for the whole house? Oh, I do remember that because uh, you handled all the arrangements. Well, Home Depot's complaining that the work was done over a year ago and. I still haven't paid for them. You, now why not? What, what did you tell? What did you tell the person? I said, hello, just because I'm a senior citizen doesn't mean that I'm out to lunch. I told him just what the fast talking sales guy told me last year, that these windows would pay for themselves in a year. Yeah. <laughs> yes, all right, I see, uh-huh. Dorothy, I simply explained it's been over a year, so they're paid for, right? <laughs> there was only silence on the other end of the line, so I hung up. 
I bet he feels like an idiot. <laughs> an idiot. Of course, an idiot. <laughs> well, obviously, you were at your exercise class today. How, how did it go? Oh, well, the goal today was to stand on one leg without getting dizzy. Rose, you are dizzy enough on two feet. You obviously had a tough time today, didn't you? Well, the teacher plays music to help us focus. Hmm. Did she uh, play to dream the impossible dream, Rose? <laughs> Did you know they're giving out prizes at the coffee shop? Hmm. Let's see what I won. Ooh. <laughs> oh, what? Good gracious! I want a motorhome! I want a motorhome! Oh, come on. That is impossible. I got coffee there this morning. The biggest prize is a free lunch. No, Dorothy. I, I want a motorhome! Rose, listen to me. They're small prizes, like a sandwich or a dessert. Dorothy, I want a motorhome. <laughs> Just look at this ticket. <laughs> Rose, this says, win a bagel. RVers, win a bagel, win a bagel. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. Rose, did you hear about the two blondes that froze to death at the drive in movie theater? They'd gone to see Closed for the Winter. <laughs> Any relationship to you, Rose? Ma, come on, Ma, be nice. Share your popcorn with Rose. All right, here. We're watching Jeopardy. Pay attention, Rose. You, you might even learn something. Ah, this popcorn is salty. Makes me thirsty. Jeopardy isn't broadcast on Thursday. This is Saturday. Uh, I need a glass of water. Be back in a jiffy. Oh, oh, did you know that a jiffy is one one hundredth of a second? Uh, uh, Rose, I'll take some water too, but I'd like some whiskey in mine, please. Oh my goodness, it's not Wednesday either. This is Saturday. <laughs> So, uh, be quiet, my show's about to begin. <laughs> Isn't it time for the Hollywood Square special? Oh, it's not on yet. Ma thinks we'll learn more if we watch Jeopardy. Like what? Please, Rose, you really don't want to know. Ma has become an expert on animals. Sophia? Animals? <laughs> oh, you want to know about animals? Oh, joy. Well, here's this. An ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Butterflies taste with their feet. Cats have over a hundred vocal sounds, and dogs have only about ten. I think that's enough, Ma. Uh, Sophia, where did you learn all that? Jeopardy! Now be quiet, so I can watch my show. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> look at all these handsome men! Oh, good gracious, look at you. Oh. And all in one place. <laughs> I'm fixing to have a really good time tonight. <laughs> Cause I'm taking one of y'all home with me. Oh, in fact, I got my eye on you, big boy. <laughs> you lucky son of a gun. <laughs> oh, hi, Sophia, Dorothy, Rose. I need a drink. Oh, good heavens, Blanche, what's wrong? You know, I find it ironic that the colors red, white, and blue stand for freedom, unless they're flashing behind you in your car. <laughs> Whatever happened, Blanche, were you speeding? Actually, no. I, uh, I ran a traffic light and I, I crashed into some man's car. Oh, oh no. Were, you, were either of you injured? Well, both of our cars were badly damaged, but fortunately, neither one of us was hurt. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's what I told the man. Just look at our cars. There's nothing left, but we're unhurt. This must be a sign from God that we should meet and be friends. <laughs> and he bought that. Of course, Dorothy. <laughs> He replied, I agree with you completely. That must be a sign from God. So I continued, and look at this. Here's another miracle. My car, it's completely destroyed. But my 75-year-old bottle of scotch didn't even break. <laughs> Surely God meant for us to drink this and celebrate our good fortune. And then I handed the bottle to the man. 
What were you doing with a 75-year-old bottle of scotch? It was a gift from an admirer. I was on the way home from a wonderful rendezvous. <laughs> rendezvous? Uh, that's French for romantic encounter. Is, is there going to be an end to this story? Well, the man opened the bottle and he took a huge swallow and then another and he handed it to me but I simply put the cap back on and I gave it to him. This was a 75 year old a 75 year old bottle of scotch? Oh my God, Blanche, whatever were you thinking? Well, he asked me Aren't you all having any? And I said, oh, no. I think I'll just wait for the police. <laughs> Adam ate the apple, too. Well, they towed my car, and a very nice policeman gave me a ride home. Now, right now, I could use that drink. Oh, I got some white wine shield, but... But why did you run the red light in the first place? Well, because of the streaker. A streaker? Out on the highway? Well, actually, I was close to the light, you know, right in front of the resort. And he came running out, butt naked, out of the resort right in front of me. I was so taken by his endowments <laughs> that I went right through that red light. Well, who was he? I don't know, he had bag over his head. <laughs> but he was quite endowed. Oh, quite. Well, it certainly wouldn't have been my ex. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe Sven. Except he died over 20 years ago. Oh, it'll probably always be a mystery. But I can state for a fact, he's not an owner here in the resort. <laughs> You, Blanche, should know. The only streaker I ever saw was at least 90 years old. You saw a 90-year-old streaker? Did you know him? Nope. Only thing I could tell was that he needed a good ironing. <laughs> Blanche, was your streaker running very fast? Well, serious enough for some serious movement. Oh, good. Enough with the movement, Blanche. I'm sure we all got the picture. We're working on a variety of movement in my exercise class and balance. Oh, yes, Pilates. Pilates? Oh, that's a type of exercise program, Rose. Well, I've done it a few times, but I like jazzercise better. Best fun I've ever had standing up. <laughs> I'm working to build up my endurance. Oh, my thoughts exactly. You know, dance and exercise for better endurance. And all. You know what, Blanche? You don't exactly dance on your back. <laughs> yeah, by golly. Dorothy's right, Blanche. Oh, et tu brute. No, it's Rose. <laughs> I can't hear my program with all of your yapping. <laughs> oh, God. Just a couple more sips and, and I'll... Oh. What's this? Oh, I just bought that this morning. Oh, it's horrible. But, oh, look, I look terrible and old. All these wrinkles and all. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be on the on top position again. <laughs> Blanche, is sex all you ever think about? Oh, and what's wrong with sex? I mean considering the cost of batteries. <laughs> Besides, I love men, and they love my new soft suede leather undies. Well, wait a minute, whatever, whatever happened to silk? Well, the clerk in the store said that men prefer suede. Oh, she was right. Men have two emotions. Horny or hungry. So if you see a gleam in a man's eye, just make him a sandwich. <laughs> I agree with Ma. I mean, let's face it, Blanche. When a woman wears leather clothing, a man's heart just might beat a little faster, and his throat might get a little dry, and he might get a little weak in the knees. But you know why? It's because she smells like a new truck. Duck? <laughs> No, Ma. Truck, not duck. Oh, that reminds me of a joke I just heard. About trucks? No, about ducks. Oh. All right, 
you three are talking so much, I can't hear my show. I'm gonna go watch it in my bedroom. Well, shall we call you when Hollywood Squares is on, Mom? Oh, sure, sure. So, tell your story, Rose. <laughs> it's really cute. Okay, three little ducks go into a bar. Say, what's your name? The bartender asked the first duck. Huey. How's your day been, Huey? Great, had a ball. Been in and out of puddles all day. What else could a duck want? <laughs> Oh, that's nice. And you? What's your name? Dewey. So how's your day been, Dewey? Great. Lovely day. Been in and out of puddles all day myself. <laughs> the bartender turned to the third duck. You must be Louie. No, she said, batting her eyelashes. My name is Puddles. <laughs> wow, Rose! I do believe you just told a risque joke. Risque? That's French for off color. That joke was off color for you. It oh. was? <laughs> you didn't realize that that was a naughty joke, Rose? Huh. I thought it was a cute joke. Oh. Why was it naughty? <laughs> oh, I hope it wasn't so bad I don't get to go up there. You know, Rose, um, St. Peter's pretty strict. Really? Oh, yes. Why, why just the other day, St. Peter was interviewing three applicants to heaven, and he asked each one to explain how they died. So the first one said, well, I came home early. <laughs> I found my wife lying naked in bed and saying she'd just gotten out of the shower. Well, her hair was dry and so was the shower, so I began to look around because I was suspecting hanky-panky. Hanky-panky? Is that French too? Oh, God, no, Rose. He suspected his wife was fooling around. Oh? Oh, Ufta! Uh, well, the man continued, I went out onto the balcony of our ninth floor apartment, and I found this guy clinging to the rail by his fingertips. <laughs> I was so angry, I began bashing his fingers with my flower pot. Well, he let go and he fell, but uh, his fall was broken by an awning and some bushes, so, so I looked around and I, I saw our antique cedar chest, this huge antique cedar chest in our bedroom. And so I dragged it and pulled it and pushed it and I got it out on the balcony and then I pushed it over the edge of the balcony and I suffered a heart attack and I died. Oh, oh dear, what happened next? Well, St. Peter sent him to the waiting room and called in the second applicant. This guy said, oh my golly, I was on the roof of an apartment building and I was working on the air conditioning equipment and I stumbled over my tools and toppled off the top of that building. But, but I managed to grab the balcony rail of the ninth floor apartment. <laughs> but then some idiot came rushing out of the balcony and he starts bashing my fingers with a flower pot and so I fell. Uh, but some awnings and, and some bushes, they saved me and I survived and, and then I looked up and I saw this gigantic huge chest come tumbling towards me and I, I tried to get out of the way but I couldn't and I was hit and I was killed by that chest. Oh, he was killed by the first man, and he was innocent of, of Hanky Panky. Just pay attention, Rose. You too, Blanche. Oh, I'm all ears. So dismissing number two, St. Peter brought in the third guy. I doubt that your last day was as interesting as the two fellows in here just before you. <laughs> I don't know, replied the man. Picture this. <laughs> I'm with my girlfriend. 
when her husband comes home and I'm looking around frantically for a place to hide. So here I am. I am buck naked hiding in this giant antique cedar chest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your joke is more, more naughty than mine. <laughs> I don't really have any risque jokes. I'll tell you what, Blanche, you just talk about your life if you want risque. <laughs> naughty, too. You're always doing stuff, just like Hector and Dilly. Hector and Dilly? Yeah, I got really upset when they were, you know, doing it in the front yard. In public? In front of God and everyone. Well, I have never. Well, not in anyone's front yard. <laughs> Sven finally got out the water hose to break it up. Wait, 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 wait. Break it up with a water hose. Well, that's right. We sure didn't want any schnaumations oh. to be created. <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking people here, are we, Rose? No, by golly, I'm talking about Hector and Dilly, our schnauzer and Dalmatian. They were doing it in our front yard and Sven had to turn the hose on them. <laughs> Sometimes, Rose, I wish someone would have turned the water hose on your parents. Maybe on you too, Blanche. Wow, now Dorothy, that's no fair. And as long as we're talking about sex. Well, it is your favorite topic, Blanche. Well, there is the time in my second marriage when Henry said, Blanche, honey, have, there's something I'd like to know. <laughs> in the 10 years we've been married, have you ever been unfaithful to me? Oh, what did you say? Well, I replied, well, Henry, I have to be honest. Yes, I've been unfaithful to you three times but always for a good reason. Oh, now, wait a minute. Is there ever a good reason? <laughs> Henry asked, what do you mean by good reason? I explained. The first time was, you know, when we were about to lose our little house because we couldn't pay the mortgage. And I went to see the banker. And the next day, our loan was extended. <gasps> oh, <laughs> you did it with your banker? Did Henry forgive you? He did. And then he asked about the second time. Henry, do you remember when you needed that heart surgery to survive but we couldn't afford it? Well, I went to see your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did the surgery for no charge. And she's always had a thing for doctors. Well, well Henry oh. thought a bit. And, and then he nodded, and you did it to save my life, so I can forgive you for that. But how about the third time? All right, I said, so do you remember, Henry, when you ran for president of your golf club? <laughs> and you needed 53 more boats? <laughs> Number two, yes, you're right, Blanche. That was a very good sex story. Well, my Sven was always crazy for sex, too. I remember one time we were driving home after an R-rated movie. I kind of snuggled up next to him and began blowing in his ear. Oh, now, Rose, that could have been very dangerous. Well, we did end up going the wrong way on the turnpike. Okay, that's it, TMI from both of you. You guys need some more wine and some popcorn. Hollywood Squares comes on in a few minutes. Did you really do all that, Blanche? I mean, sex with 53 men? You'll never know, dear Rose. It's just part of the mystique. Another French word? Oui, s'il vous plaît. Well, well, ludicrous to you. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota, and I'll, I'll just start talking Norwegian if you don't watch out. Oh, Ufta. Yeah, you betcha. Gross. <laughs> Honey, you think Norwegian, you might as well talk it. I'm not sure what you mean, but my baby brother Oli could sure give you something to think about. Oli? 
Yeah, Oli, he's a looker, by golly. Tall, blonde, lots of muscles. Well, in his head or his physique. Physique? His body, Rose, his body. I think maybe you need to introduce me to him. Oh, by golly, no, I couldn't do that. He, he's taken. He and Lena have been married 25 years. Oh, that's never stopped me before. <laughs> well, they've been having a rough time lately. Oh, what kind of a rough time? Well, Lena told me they went in for counseling and she listed every problem they've had. I'm afraid Oli hasn't been the best husband. Oh. His best husband, that's just an oxymoron. Is that another French word? <laughs> no, just an impossibility. So, go on, so Lena's unhappy? Well, she said she went on and on. Neglect, lack of intimacy, emptiness, loneliness, feeling unloved. So are Oli and Lena getting a divorce? Oh, I, I don't think so, but well, maybe. After Lena finished talking, the therapist got up and asked her to stand. Then he embraced and kissed her long and passionately. Now that's a therapist I need to meet. Well, <laughs> Lena said she sat down in a daze as the therapist turned to Oli. This is what your Lena needs at least three times a week. Can you do this? Now this is why I said maybe. Oli answered, well, I can bring her here on Mondays and Wednesdays, <laughs> but on Fridays, I fish. Rose, <laughs> you little dickens, you're putting me on. Oh, girls, I really need to talk to you about something. I'm starting to worry about Ma. I mean, her hearing, doesn't it seem to be getting worse? I know what you mean, truck. Duck. Oh, I maybe know. Whiskey I'll... Wednesday, all of these well, things. No, I think maybe you ought to take her to a hearing specialist and have that hearing check. Oh, my God. You really are saying you think you should hide home. I, I need to take Ma to an ear doctor. That's a tough one. There is nothing wrong with my hearing. You're not taking me to any damn doctor. Oh, my God, Ma. Come on. I, I'm just concerned about your hearing. It, it does seem to be getting worse. No. I hear what I want to hear, and that's enough. Oh. Well, my friend Eddie was going deaf, so we went to the doctor for hearing aids. At his two-month checkup, the doctor said, Your hearing is perfect. Your family must be happy. Eddie replied, Oh, I haven't told my family yet. I just sit around and listen. I've changed my will three times. <laughs> I understand that, but I'm just concerned about Ma. She, she is getting older. I mean, didn't you have a friend Ma's age that died recently, Blanche? I'm afraid so. He had a heart attack while we were making love and on Sunday morning. Well, I think having sex at that age is just asking for trouble. No, he was actually quite spry and very rich. <laughs> but at his age, you know, the best time to do it was when the church bells would ring. Just the right rhythm. Kind of nice and slow and even, nothing too strenuous. Just simply in it with the ding and out with the dog. <laughs> but you know, he'd still be alive if, if, if the ice cream truck hadn't come along. <laughs> over. Is, is Hollywood Squares on yet? Oh, uh, pretty soon, Ma. Just come on in and sit down. Oh, so, Sophia. How was that restaurant where you girls ate the other night? Oh, it was, it was really great. Oh, what was the name of it? Oh, uh, what's the name of that flower that you give somebody you love? You know, it's red, it's long stem, and it has thorns. A rose. You mean a rose? That's it. Rose. Where did we have dinner last night? <laughs> Ma, you are forgetful as well as hard of hearing. No, I'm just funning with you. Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. Oh, I agree. Forget the health food. I need all the preservatives I can get. <laughs> My problem is when I fall down, I wonder what else I can do while I'm down there. 
I know a couple men that could give you a couple suggestions. <laughs> Blanche, now come on, you be good. Oh. Well, all the same, I realize you're getting old when you get the same sensation from a rocking chair that you once got from a roller coaster. <laughs> or sitting on top of a washing machine. What? what? <laughs> or not. Were you all spying on me? And how did that work out for you, Blanche? We all have our moments of need. I mean, take tonight. Here it is, Saturday night, and I'm not out on a date. I don't understand why this gorgeous southern woman, who men find irresistible, <laughs> is spending the night with her roommates. Good heavens, Blanche, I don't have a date either. And your point is? <laughs> None of us have dates tonight. Isn't this fun? The four of us all together, drinking wine, watching TV, and eating popcorn? Police. I'd be out on a date if Herman Murgatroyd hadn't turned me down. Herman, Herman Murgatroyd? I have never heard you mention him before. I haven't. Never met him. Read in the obituary column that his wife just died, so I figured I'm going to give him a call and ask him out for dinner. <laughs> but he turned me down. Oh. Well, maybe it was a bit too soon what, with his wife just dying and all. Nope. It was Alice Goodwin. She called him first and beat me to it, <laughs> beat me to the punch. But he'll be sorry, because she has more wrinkles than God. God has wrinkles? Oof to me. Oof to me. Oh, that's just like oofta, but with a French accent for Blanche. Water hoes, anyone? <laughs> you know, time may be a great healer, but time is an absolutely lousy beautician. Although I'm grateful. I haven't lost my hourglass figure. <laughs> you know what, Blanche? Maybe you haven't, but I do think somebody poured an extra 90 minutes of sand into that hourglass. I've just become more voluptuous. Men seem to like it. I'll tell you what, honey. <laughs> These old goats that you've been seeing would like anything with tits. <laughs> According to Jeopardy, goat's milk is very nutritious. <laughs> I was not referring to those kind of tits, Ma. I wonder what happens to goats when they're too old to produce milk. <laughs> Do they just put them out to pasture? No, no, they send them on bus tours. Or they put them in old goats' homes. Oh, no, no old folks' home for me. I'll be checking into a Holiday Inn. Do you know that the average cost for um, nursing home care is more than $250 a day? But at the Holiday Inn, with a senior discount, it's just $75, and breakfast is included. I'd rather take a cruise. You know, for that $250 a day, I can have travel and meals and entertainment. Plus, cruise ships have a spa and swimming pool and exercise room and a medical clinic and you get free shampoo and lotion and soap. I have been treated like a princess, not a patient. So let's fly to Miami and hop on a cruise and never leave. Well, if we're going to the airport, I've heard senior citizens can take the airport shuttle bus. We could eat at one of the nice restaurants there and they have shops. You know what? If I'm at the airport, I'm going to fly to Hawaii. Hey, Ma, you want to go to Hawaii? They've got holiday inns there, too. Oh. Here, try some of these chocolates. Better yet, let's all cruise to Hawaii. Ooh. Oh, good. This is good, Dorothy. Where'd y'all get this? At the new grocery store around the corner. Mm. I could not resist oh. the smell of melted chocolate. The smell? Ooh, it's a new concept. There's a special smell for each department. Yeah, well, don't be going near the toilet paper department. <laughs> oh, ew. Now, let's get back to my idea. We can catch a ship to Hawaii right out of L.A. and then do the Holiday Inn thing. All of us? All of us, Rose. We've been through it all, ladies. 
went to marriage and divorce and death. Yeah, you know, she's right. Our kids, our grandkids are all grown, but we're still kicking, and we've got a lot of living yet to do. And men to meet. <laughs> and places to go. Well, right now, I gotta go pee. So I'll be back in time for Hollywood Squares. <laughs> okay, Mom, remember what I told you about the toilet seat? Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Ma, gotta love her. She's definitely still kicking. <laughs> you know, last week I was with her when I took her to her doctor's appointment. And so she asked her doctor, is it true the medication you prescribed has to be taken for the rest of my life? And the doctor said, yes. And then Ma replied, so how serious is my condition? Because this prescription is marked no refills! <laughs> oh, I love Sophia. She's so real and honest. Nothing fake. No facelifts, tummy tucks. She's aging just like God wants her to. You know, I heard about a 65-year-old woman. She had a heart attack. She was taken to the hospital. And while on the operating table, she had a near-death experience. And seeing God, she asked, is my time up? And God answered, no. You have another 33 years, two months, and eight days to live. Well, hearing that, the woman decided, I'm going to have a facelift and liposuction and breast implants and a tummy tuck. She dyed her hair and she brightened her teeth. She figured she might as well make the most of uh, all those years she had left. A couple weeks later, she was crossing the street and killed by a pickup truck that ran a red light. When she stood in front of God, she asked, I thought you said I had another 33 years. Why'd y'all let that truck hit me? God replied, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> that doesn't. No facelift here. Never, never, never. No facelift. No. What was that? I keep telling Ma to lower the toilet seat gently, not. Drop it down. Oh, don't be too hot on her, Dorothy. You know, at her age, you know. Girls, I'm still thinking about Blanche's story. I had a near-death experience once. I got hit by a steam shovel. Oh, my God. Now, that is something that could only happen to you, Rose. I know, by golly. And while I was unconscious, I was roaming all around heaven. And how'd you all know it was heaven? Well, because it sure wasn't St. Olaf's, and because I ran into my uncle Gustav, and he'd been dead for five years. You ran into your dead uncle? I did, by golly. We talked quite a while about the family and St. Olaf's, and then Uncle Gustav asked to see my ticket. A ticket? It's not a French word, Blanche. <laughs> you know, ticket, into heaven. Anyway... Uncle Gustav said I had a round trip ticket and told me it was time for me to go back. You know what? I wonder, Rose, if that steam shovel hit you in the head. Oh, when I woke up in the hospital, Sven was there beside me with our children. You know, being dead really changed my life. That happens to a lot of people, I would imagine. <laughs> so, anyway, I like the idea of the Holiday Inn in Hawaii, but if we decide not to go, there's a new seniors complex in Temecula. You know what? Why don't you take the wine away? I think you've had plenty. And you know what about that new seniors complex in Temecula? There are way too many rules. Blanche would not like it. I mean, the sleeping quarters are separate for men and women. They're out of bounds. Anybody caught sneaking into the opposite sex dorm is going to be charged 20 bucks for the first offense, 60 for the second, and 180 for the third time. Well, I wonder how much it'd be for a season pass. 
Trust you to think of that, trust you. And you know what, Blanche? The people are much older than the three of us. I mean, my God, they are well into their 80s. Oh, oh. There was one old gal who came to the clinic when I was there with Ma. And I guess the doctor had asked if she was sexually active because she, she called out to her husband who was sitting in the waiting room and she said, Mom, do we still have intercourse? Well, there was complete silence until Bob answered impatiently, If I told you once, Irma, I've told you a hundred times, what we have is Blue Cross. <laughs> oh, that's what I have too, Blue Cross. I wonder if we use the same insurance agent. Uh, Do y'all think Blue Cross would cover the cost of a tattoo? Well, hardly. <laughs> what kind of tattoo are you talking well, about? You know, I just want a little rosebud like right here. Ooh. Oh, a rose because of me? Oh, God, no rose. A rosebud, you know, just to cover up that little birthmark I got right there. Okay, so who would do it? Well, Norman, you know, our neighbor. He owns a tattoo parlor. I thought Norm was a jeweler. A jeweler? <laughs> well, yeah, he, he advertises piercings. I was thinking of going to him to have my ears pierced. Oh, Rose, he's advertising body piercings. <laughs> you know, like noses and nipples and tongues and... What do you girls think? Just, just a little rose, like right there. <laughs> you know what, Rose? You know what, Blanche? <laughs> that little rose that you're talking about, the older you get, that's going to become a really long-stemmed rose. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, you're just an old poop. I'm remembering the mirror, Blanche. I'm just saying. Is Hollywood Squares on yet? Oh, Ma, let me, let me say something. How many times do I have to remind you about lowering the toilet seat gently? I mean, none of us do this. You're the only one who lets the lid bang down. Oh, Dorothy, why don't you just get me a litter box then? Uh, and what's this? Why isn't the TV on? You know what? We got to talking and forgot about it. Uh, switch it over to Channel 7. It, it's already started. I hope it's not over. Oh, I think we can catch a little. Okay, keep watching. It's pretty good. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh, I like their theme song. Start off with Charlie Weaver. <laughs> if you're gonna make a parachute jump, Charlie, at least how high should you be? Uh, I think three days of steady drinking at the 15th hole at the ranch ought to do it. <laughs> Another one for Charlie, okay? Which of your five senses tend to diminish as you get older? Well, my sense of decency. <laughs> Just ask the girls at the ranch, right? Right, Denise? <laughs> I'm not going to go there, Charlie. <laughs> So, you've just decided to grow strawberries, Charlie. Are you going to get any during the first year? Well, of course not, Peter. I'm too grizzly growing strawberries. <laughs> and lemons. <laughs> lemons. <laughs> you said it, Charlie. Okay, let's just keep going. When a couple have a baby, who is responsible for its sex? Well, I'll just lend the guy my car, and the rest is up to him. <laughs> and our last question for you, Charlie. You know, Jackie Gleason recently revealed that he firmly believes in them and has actually seen them on at least two occasions. What are they? Well, that's a tough one. Let me think. His feet! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie Weaver. <laughs> Now let's uh, let's move to the lovely and consummate Rosemary, one of our favorite stars. You know, Rosemary, according to Cosmopolitan, if you meet a stranger at a party and you think he's attractive, is it okay to come out and just ask him if he's married? No, Denise said to wait until the morning. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, we never lack for a unique answer from you, do we, Rosemary? No. <laughs> okay, one more. As you grow older, do you tend to gesture more or less with your hands while talking? Peter, you ask me one more growing old question, and I'll give you a gesture you'll never forget. <laughs> I guess I'll have to be a little more careful on that one. <laughs> How about this one? During the tornado, are you safer in the bedroom or in the closet? <laughs> Unfortunately, Peter, I'm always safe in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can win. Okay, a big thanks, Rosemary, folks. And now let's give a little respect and welcome our next star, Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Rodney, we get questions all the time from our viewers. I'd like to get your response from one of them. You'll like it, especially since it's Hawaiian week. Hey, yeah, I brought this moo moo out of mothballs just for you, Peter. <laughs> so what's the question? All right, let me just read the letter, okay? Yeah. I get this from uh, Rob Steinow. He's a, he's a surfer dude from Hawaii. As a matter of fact, Rob sent along a photo of himself. Uh -oh. um, hmm. hmm. It appears that this was taken at a Halloween costume party. <laughs> You know, I'm not sure the viewers need to see this one. <laughs> Whoa. At any rate, Rob writes that a Hawaiian woodpecker and a California woodpecker were arguing about which place had the toughest trees. The Hawaiian woodpecker said that Hawaii had a tree that no woodpecker could peck. The California woodpecker accepted the challenge and he promptly pecked a hole in the tree with new problem. Oh, what's the question, Peter? Okay, be patient. Okay, it's coming. The California woodpecker <laughs> then challenged the Hawaiian woodpecker to peck a tree in California that was absolutely unpeckable. The Hawaiian woodpecker accepted his challenge and successfully pecked the tree with no problem whatsoever. Hey, is that some sort of pecking order to this question? <laughs> All right. According to Rob, the two woodpeckers were now really confused. Here's the question. They're not the only one, huh? <laughs> How is it that the California woodpecker was able to peck the Hawaiian tree and the Hawaiian woodpecker was able to peck the California tree but neither one was able to peck the tree in their own state. Do you have an answer for that question? Uh, I do, Peter, but I'd be in a peck of trouble if I was life if I tried to answer that question. <laughs> and we certainly don't want that to happen, do we? <laughs> Give it your best shot, Rodney. Take a peck at it. Okay, Peter. All right, here it is. Seems to me there's only one logical answer to this question. Your pecker is always harder when you're away from home. <laughs> oh, what do you think, audience? Do you agree with Rodney? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're proud, you're got proud. them in your pocket now, Rodney. Now, let's give you a few more questions. You know, we know you're a family man, my man. Are your sons or daughters harder to raise? Oh, it's easy. Sons, sons. My son's a real trip, you know? Last week he put super glue in my hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> I told him, someday you're going to have kids of your own. He said, someday you will too. <laughs> hey, you know, those kids, they grow up too slow these days, you know? But my daughter, she's no, she's no trip either, you know? She's been picked up so many times, she's growing handles. <laughs> She was voted by her high school class, most likely to conceive. <laughs> okay, let's move to one of your favorite topic, topics, Rodney. Sex. Who do you think screams more during sex? Oh, my wife, she screams during sex. Every time I walk in on her. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject, Rodney, who initiates sex more, men or women? Oh, I'm not sure. Last time I tried to have a wife my sex, we took off our clothes, we couldn't stop pointing our fingers and laughing. <laughs> okay, we need to make this a little easier for you, Rodney. True or false question? 50% of married couples smoke after sex. 
True or false? Ha <laughs> ha, my doctor, my doctor, Vinnie Boom Box, you know, my doctor. He told my wife and I we should cut down on smoking. So we decided we'd only smoke after sex. I still got the same pack since 1975. <laughs> She's up to two packs a day. <laughs> okay, Rodney, here's the last question for you. Yeah. Who cooks more in a marriage? The husband or the wife? Oh, my wife's a bad cook. My wife's a bad cook. And She's so, so how bad. bad is she? How bad is she? How bad is she? Oh, my wife's so bad. We pray after we eat. <laughs> oh, but she's such a bad cook. Oh, how bad? Oh, no, how bad oh, is she? How bad is she? My wife's a really bad cook. How bad is she? Oh, she's so bad the flies chipped in to fix a hole in the kitchen screen door. <laughs> She made alphabet soup for the kids last week. They spelled out help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. A big hand for Rodney Dangerfield. What a great way to celebrate Hawaiian week. And our final questions are for the one and only Paul Lynn. Oh. Paul, why do Hell's Angels wear leather? Because chiffon wrinkles too easily. <laughs> well, I guess that explains a lot. Next question. It's considered bad taste to discuss two subjects in a nudist camp. One is politics. What is the other? Tape measures. <laughs> All right, Paul. What about this one? When you pat a dog on his head, he'll wag his tail. What will a goose do? Make him bark. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go any further with dog, barking dogs, Paul. You know, according to Ann Landers, what are two things you should never do in bed? Oh, point and laugh, just like Rodney said. <laughs> you know, I think you and Rodney have been spending way too much time together. Probably. Let's move on now. Paul, what's a good reason for pounding me? Mm. Pounding me. Ah, loneliness. What happened? I'm, I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Oh, it was just getting good. Oh, I heard that when Paul Lynn said loneliness during the regular show, the audience laughed for 15 minutes. Oh, 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 wow. I'm still clicking. We could watch The Price is Right. Oh. Just turn off the TV, Ma. Oh, fine. Oh, gosh. That show brought back a bad memory. Like what? Oh, my gosh, girls. I even hate to think about this. It was when Stanley and I were still married. I woke in the middle of the night, and Stan wasn't in bed, so I, I put on my robe, and I went downstairs to look for him, and I, I found him sitting in the kitchen table, and he was staring at the TV, and it was Hollywood Squares. But he had the volume turned down, and gosh, he was wiping away tears. And so I said, what's the matter, dear? And Stan looked up at me, and he said, oh, it's the 20th anniversary of the day we met. Do you remember 20 years ago when we started dating? I was 18, and you were only 16. <laughs> yes, I, I, I remember. Well, do you remember when your father caught us in the back seat of my car? Yes, I remember. Well, you do, rem do you remember when, when your father shoved the shotgun in my face and, and he said, either you marry my daughter or I will make sure that you spend the next 20 years of your life in prison. I do remember that too. Well, Dorothy, I would have gotten out today. <laughs> and then the fight began. Oh, 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 Dorothy, I'm sorry the show brought up bad memories. I remember when Sven and I almost got a divorce about five years before he died. I didn't know you and Sven came close to divorcing. I did have an interview with the judge. What was that like? Well, he asked, 
What are the grounds for a divorce? And what did you say? Oh, by golly, about four acres and a nice little home with a stream. <laughs> no, I mean, what is the foundation of this case? Oh, yeah, sure, uh, concrete brick and mortar. Uh, no, no, I mean, what are your relations like? Oh, a wonderful aunt and uncle and, and great parents. Would someone get out the water hose? <laughs> then the judge asked, do you have a grudge? No, just a carport. <laughs> Good grief, woman. Any infidelity? We have a stereo. <laughs> no, 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 no. Does your husband ever beat you up? Every morning, he makes coffee for us. All right, two, two water hoses, two. Finally, the judge asked, Lady, why in hell do you want a divorce? Oh, I, I don't want a divorce. Sven thinks he does. He says he just can't communicate with me. <laughs> Rose, was this before or after that you got hit by that steam shovel? <laughs> I, need, I need to get this straight. Rose volunteers in a place where they help people who have mental problems? Ma, I don't think we need to go there. Oh, but Rose, honey, you never did get divorced. Oh, no. Well, how did y'all work it out? Well, Sven took a job as a lumberjack in Alaska. Oh, smart man. Uh, he wanted me to stay in Minnesota with our children so they could finish school. Very smart man. And so that's where Sven died in Alaska. Was, was it a heart attack? Oh, no. Sven didn't die of a heart attack. He got attacked by a grizzly bear in Alaska. A grizzly killed him? Oh, no, no. Ufta. Sven wrote that he wrestled with a grizzly and it maimed him so badly he'd never be able to return to Minnesota. And you believed him. Why wouldn't I believe him? Well, did you ever see him again? Well, he sent money every month for me and the children and letters. He spent the rest of his life tracking that bear, seeking revenge, don't you know? Sounds like a movie we saw. Yeah, Revenant. Would you stop saying those French words? Ufta, it's not polite. So how did Sven die? Well, his good friend Lars brought me Sven's cremated remains and told me the whole story. Sven did find that bear by golly and he killed him. And then he must have gotten hungry, so he Ooh. built a fire and he took his knife. Oh, TMI. Ooh, and no, that's not French. Rose, you cannot be serious. I'm telling you just what Lars told me. Yeah, sure, you betcha. He roasted the bear. Well, he must have wanted some seasoning or truffles to go with it because the coroner said that Sven died from mushroom poisoning. What? Mushroom poisoning? Mushrooms, yeah, you betcha. Wouldn't you know? Of course. Mushrooms. The alternative to divorce. Now, why I didn't think of that? I might have used it on Tom. Which husband was Tom? Number three. The one that made me a widow. We came close to divorce one evening, right after the honeymoon. Tom spent all his spare time in the garage, welding stuff and fixing up some old damn motorcycle. And I finally said, honey, now that we're married, maybe you could quit spending so much of your time out here and maybe a little bit more inside. We could sell all this welding equipment and along with that gun collection, lose those stupid model airplanes, and dump that vintage Harley. <laughs> well, Tom, he got a horrified look on his face. Darling, what's wrong? And he replied, there for a minute, you were starting to sound like my ex-wife. And I screamed, you never told me you were married before. And Tom replied, I wasn't. Ooh.
Never try to separate a boy from his toys. Oh. Tom had his toys until he got in an accident with that old Harley. And he died before we got a divorce. Or I poisoned him with mushrooms. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. I wouldn't put it past you, Blanche. You know what? I never understood why my ma and my pa got divorced until Stan cheated on me. Oh, Ma, remember all those questions I used to ask? You were, sh you were sure a nosy little thing. I was. I wanted to know how old you were. I wanted to know how much you weighed. But especially, I wanted to know why you and Daddy got a divorce. And you never could give me a good reason. But then I figured out a way to get all the answers to my questions. What'd you do? I looked at Ma's driver's license. I mean, there it was, age, weight, even why they got divorced. What? You found that out from a driver's license? Of course, right there. It said right there that Ma got an F in sex. Oh. <laughs> Only... <laughs> The only way I survived raising you, Pussycat, was having a really good sense of humor. Oh, you did, Ma. You made me laugh. You know, we don't stop laughing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop laughing. Right. I love being over 70. I learn something new every day, and I forget five others. Uh, oh, over 70? Yeah, well, I didn't say how far yeah. over 70. <laughs> well, I hope I'm as active and fit as you, Sophia, when I'm your age. <laughs> you know, my goal for 2018 is to lose 10 pounds. I only have 15 to go. <laughs> Me too. I ate salad last night for dinner. A rose. Well, mostly croutons and tomatoes. She's fibbing. Well, really, just one big round crouton covered with tomato sauce and cheese. <laughs> Tell the truth, Rose. Fine, it was a pizza. I ate a pizza. There, now you know, woofta. <laughs> but Sophia had one too. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean to brag, but I finished my 14-day diet food in three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Besides, a recent study has shown that women who carry a little extra weight live much longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> Just remember, once you're over the hill, you begin to pick up speed. Ooh. Life is just like flying a kite. My God, that's pithy, Rose. What exactly do you mean? The airhead is philosophizing? Yeah, it's kind of like the song, Blowing in the Wind. <laughs> I just meant you never know for sure where a kite will land. Just like life. Wow. Well, for, for you, Rose, that was absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately... For Stan and me, uh, a kite is what landed us smack in the divorce court. Not as a fair? Oh, no. I'm, well, that might have prompted it. I mean, here he is. He's outside in the street, and he's trying to fly this kite that he just bought, and he couldn't get it up. Oh, that brings back a lot of memories for me, too. <laughs> that would be husband number four. He was in the kite flying? No, Rose. I'm with you, Dorothy, you know, on that water hose water thing. Water hose. <laughs> so, so what happened? Stan couldn't get it up. I, I mean, the, the kite, of course. <laughs> All right. So I watched for a while, and, and it was obvious what the problem was. So, so I called out, you need to get a tail. Well, he couldn't hear very well. What, 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 what? You need some tail. <laughs> well, that brought a response. Damn it, make up your mind. I asked for some last night, and you told me to go fly a kite. So with Stan, it, it was a kite? With Stan, well, it was definitely the coup d'etat, and yes, Rose, that is a French word. Well, 
with my fourth husband. It was a pair of boots. Boots. Oh, I'm thinking of that song. Should I stay or should I go? Don't you move, Sophia. Oh, <laughs> Roy, the oldest of my husbands, always wanted a new pair of cowboy boots. Mm. And he buy, finally bought some and wore them home one night and he said, notice anything different about me? And I looked him over and said, nope. So he stormed off into the bedroom. And when he came back into the living room where I was watching Days of Our Lives, he was completely naked, except for those new boots. Notice anything different now? I looked him over once again, and I said, Roy, honey, what's different? It's hanging down today. It was hanging down yesterday, and it'll be hanging down again tomorrow. <laughs> now, Roy was furious. And do you know why it's hanging down, Blanche? No, not a clue. It's hanging down because it's looking at my new boots. <laughs>